making banana cheesecakes. First thing we have to do is make the base of the cheesecake. So what I'm using today are these four and a half inch round uh, little cheese, mini cheesecake pans with removable bottoms, or you can use an eight inch for making one big one, or you can make those little ones that are half the size, they're about two, three inches across and they come in a pan of six. Uh, you can make those and you can probably get eight of those out of this. So four of these, one big one, or eight of the small ones. And I'm gonna spray these. That's just my guarantee that they will come out later. And the crust, in a large bowl, I've got one cup of graham cracker crumbs, three tablespoons of sugar, standard recipe for a graham cracker crumb, and three tablespoons of melted butter. Get this out of my way. Just now make sure you blend this up well. I can make these crusts, and I often do, way ahead of time, and then I wrap each one individually, and then put it in freezer bags, and I freeze them, and then I have them available on the spot if I want to make a quick cheesecake or a mousse or something like that. They'll keep in your freezer for months. There we go. Now we'll put them in our cups. This is my favorite scooping out spoon. I'm sure you have your favorite tools too. So they each get one big scoopy spoon and then a half. In other words, just divide this mixture evenly. Okay. And then I have another really, really technical tool. It's the pusher for my old uh, food processor. I always keep this because it's great for doing this. Just tamping these down. And my oven is heating up to 300 degrees. And we're going to pre-bake these just like this for seven minutes. And then after the seven minutes, we can fill them. And we can bake our cheesecakes. So these are going in the oven, seven minutes. Our cheesecake bases are out of the oven. I put them on a rack over there to cool, and now we'll make the filling. I left the oven on, but I turned it up to 350. So, you may even hear a beep. So I've got three eight ounce packages of cream cheese at room temperature. As you can see, it's pretty soft. Put it on our mixer and get that going. It's very important to have your cream cheese at room temperature. If you try to just mix this up and it's not at room temperature, it's not going to be smooth. You are going to have lumps. I don't care how long you mix it. It just never seems to work right. If you want to speed it up, put it in the microwave and bursts until it gets soft. All right. Now I have three quarters of a cup of sugar, and I'm gonna add that gradually into the cream cheese. And just blend that up. What I like to do from time to time, take it off the mixer and scrape down the sides because if you don't, then the bottom's getting mixed up and the sides are staying hard. This just helps blend it up a lot better. Okay. Now at this time, as long as I've got the mixer down, I'm gonna take one banana that I put in my mini prep and I blended it. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. But, you know, as good as you can do. Come on, I want all that banana in there. Paid for the whole banana, I want the whole banana. 
And now I'll put in a teaspoon of my vanilla. And now back on the mixer. If you wanted a plain vanilla cheesecake, you could have just left out the banana. And I would add three tablespoons of flour. And that will give you a more of a New York style cheesecake, a little bit on the heavier side, which is the way I like it. All right, that's pretty blended. Now I'm gonna put in my three eggs. Let that mix for a minute and I'll go get my shells and bring them over here. I've got my famous favorite spoon again. Okay, that's, that's about pretty well blended. You don't want to over blend a cheesecake because the more you beat it up, the more you might get um, cracks. And I'm not baking this in a water bath, so. Now, filling them up. That's where I start, three of my big scoops. You're just gonna have to find your own tool, whatever it might be, or maybe you just wanna eyeball it, that's fine too. When I put these in the oven, they're going to go in for about 30 to 35 minutes. And what you want to see is that they're mostly set, but there's going to be a little jiggle in the middle. And do not fill these to the very tippy top because these have a tendency to mound. So let's see here. We've got a little bit of a mess here. A little drip. Just clean those up. Just makes my life easier later cleaning. Okay. So into my oven, 350 degrees, 30 to 35 minutes so you have a little jiggle in the center. I've just taken the banana cheesecakes out of the oven. They were in there for 30 minutes. And when I picked them up, they had a little jiggle. That's been a couple of minutes since I took them out. So the jiggle is almost gone. And they were a little sunken in the middle and the sides came up. But as you can see, they've pretty well evened off because they settled down. This is perfect, exactly what you want. So now I'm just going to put them on a rack and I'm going to let them cool off completely. I'm gonna let them cool at room temperature for maybe 15, 20 minutes. Then I'm gonna put them in the refrigerator, except for one. I'm gonna put one in the freezer because I'm gonna show you something really cool that you can do with it later on. So we'll let them cool down and I'll be right back. Our banana cheesecakes are nicely cooled off. This is the one I put in the freezer. It's not completely frozen, it's just very cold, which is what I want to do to show you a little fun thing. Just running a knife around the edge to make sure it's loose. Take its little collar off. And then I like to remove it from the pan. Now, I like to cut this into five wedges. Then, 
take a stick, a lollipop stick, which is available in any. I put the stick on there. Now, these will have to go back into the freezer. They really have to freeze on because if I try dipping them in chocolate right now, they are going to fall off the, the um, stick. So what I will do is I will put those in the freezer until they're rock solid. Then I will get some chocolate. And I use, use a container like this, which is deep and long, a glass. And then I dip them, let them drip off, and then put them in the refrigerator to set. And what you end up with is a cheesecake pop. And I like to serve these on a platter on their sides, a whole bunch of them in a row. You could do white chocolate, dark chocolate, milk chocolate, whichever one you like. And they really look spectacular on a tray. And let me tell you, people love these. So I hope you try that with the cheesecake. Now, the other cheesecake, I'll just get those out of the way for now. All I did there was refrigerate it again. A knife around the edge just to make sure it's going to come out nicely. Okay, now how big of a serving would you like? I'm going to cut these I think in fours. It's pretty rich and that way nobody really feels like Oh my God, I've eaten so much. So I will take one. Oops, before I do that. Yesterday, I made some homemade salted bourbon caramel sauce and I put it in the refrigerator and it hardens. It gets really, really, really thick. And I put it now in the microwave for about 45 seconds in the jar just to loosen it up so I can use it. Otherwise, it is really thick. Um, the recipe is on the website and you can go there. I'm not going to make it today. It's very simple and um, I really uh, would like you to try it. It's a really good sauce for over ice cream or in this case over cheesecake. Just going to give it a good mix up. Put a nice dollop on this plate. Put your little cheesecake on top. And maybe just another drizzle. And that is a very lovely light dessert. And I say light because it's not a big piece of cheesecake. It's just a little piece of cheesecake. You don't feel as guilty, but you're getting the richness. So I hope you try these banana cheesecakes. They're absolutely wonderful.